Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you're all uh, comfortable and able to join us for our virtual athletic hall of fame ceremony today. I'm going to give just a couple of minutes before we officially get started to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to, to click in and, and get going, but we'll get started here in just a minute or two. Well, welcome family and friends to the 2020 Concordia University Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I'm Reagan McAfee, Director of Athletics, and I am honored to serve as your co mc uh, for our time together today. I'll also be joined by Assistant Athletic Director for Communications, Josh Deer. I know this event looks quite a bit different this year than what we're used to, but what hasn't changed is the pleasure it brings me to be able to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of both Golden Bears and Comets, who laid the foundation for the success for our over 400 student athletes at CSP today. We're so thankful for your contributions, both on and off the field, and are especially proud of the individuals that you have become. There is no doubt that your excellence as student athletes was an indicator of the meaningful achievements your postgraduate lives would bring. I now have the pleasure today of introducing you to our new president at CSP, Reverend Dr. Brian Friedrich. He's a CSP grad himself and a great lover of all things sports. We're grateful that he has chosen to return to St. Paul to lead our university. Dr. Friedrich, thank you for kicking us off this morning. Thank you so much, Reagan. Good morning. I am a grateful alumnus of Concordia St. Paul class of 1979 and so excited and blessed to serve CSP as its 10th president. Welcome, you're part of history today, our first ever virtual athletic hall of fame. With Reagan, I'm disappointed that we can't be together in person, but I'm delighted that we can celebrate some outstanding individuals today. Their accomplishments, their efforts are very worthy of the recognition they receive today. As a student in the late 80s, we cheered on the Comets as they competed in the NAIA. And now, along with our mascot, Comet, we cheer on the Golden Bears in NCAA Division II. It's a huge leap, an impressive record of success since the Golden Bears began their Division II athletic investment. Our success in athletics and academics at CSP today is really built upon the legacy of those we're inducting today and their peers. The example they set, the achievements and demonstrations of the char their character on and off the field, the relationships they built with coaches, teammates, classmates carry on today and continue to inspire our student athletes our coaches in our administration. During my first nine months as Concordia's president, I've seen firsthand what a distinctly different institution CSP is. One of our distinctive differences is our mission. Our mission, which is to prepare students for thoughtful and informed living for dedicated service to God and humanity and enlightened care of God's creation, all within the context of the Christian gospel. Those inducted into the Hall of Fame today exemplify and embody our mission. As student athletes, they excelled academically and athletically, and today they continue to represent what is the very best about CSP as they serve in many different vocations and fields. So to today's inductees, Hall of Fame class of 2020, 
congratulations. You are most deserving. We are so excited to induct you into the Hall of Fame today. Congratulations and God's rich and continued blessings. Thank you very much, Dr. Friedrich. Um, I'd now like to take a moment to recognize the Athletic Hall of Fame Selection Committee. Uh, you can see them there on the slide. We so appreciate the time and energy that they spend sorting through the many nominations um, that we receive. And we also know that they have a very, un, a very difficult job because we have so many talented student athletes that have come through our programs over the years. So thank you to our Athletic Hall of Fame Committee for continuing to serve CSP in this way. We're now gonna take a moment to just briefly honor those who were unable to join us this morning. First off, uh, we'll recognize Kowalski Bacon, a track and field student athlete from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Kowalski graduated in the class of 2009 with a BA in business administration. Also, Maggie McNamara, a volleyball student athlete from Zambroda, Minnesota. Maggie graduated in the class of 2010 with a BA in mathematics. Whitney Murado Simon from Washburn, Wisconsin. Whitney was on our volleyball team and graduated the class of 2009 with a BBA in business administration. And finally, Sadie Kessler Murphy from St. Michael, Minnesota, volleyball student athlete who graduated in the class of 2010 with a BA in accounting and finance. So congratulations to those four who unfortunately were not able to join us today. So we'll now honor our, our first uh, inductee who is here today. After arriving from Hermantown High School, Anna Bjornland Graves made an immediate impact at second base, starting nearly every game over her four years and earning all NSIC first team honors in each of her final three seasons. Graves helped lead the team to four consecutive seasons with at least 27 wins, culminating in a trip to the NCAA tournament in her senior season. Graves provided value on both sides of the ball as her 370 total bases and 15 triples both still stand as program records, while her 437 assists and 69 double plays turned are tied for first at Concordia. She also ranks second at CSP with 248 hits and 50 doubles. After a strong debut season in which she led the NSIC in doubles and triples in 2007, Graves put together a dominant conference campaign as a sophomore and won the NSIC batting title with a 481 average in league play. Her efforts that season resulted in her first of three straight all NSIC first team selections. She took another step forward as a junior as she put up a career high 441 on base percentage with a 360 batting average while driving in a career best 33 runs and stealing a career best 17 bases. She added another all NSIC first team honor while helping the team to a 33 win campaign. In her final season with the Golden Bears, Graves hit 393 with a career high 26 extra base hits en route to being named to the NFCA All-America third team. Her elf efforts helped lead the team to a 35 and 17 record, including a 19 and seven record in league play as they grabbed a first round victory in the NCAA tournament. While Graves found success on the diamond, she also found success in the classroom as she was named a 2010 ESPN The Magazine Academic All-America third team selection. She was also named Academic All-Region twice and NSIC All-Academic three times while completing her degree in criminal justice. Following graduation, 
Graves took a job in her hometown of Hermantown at Urshan Retirement Group, where she currently holds the position of licensed office manager. Graves and her husband, Peter, were married in 2010, and they currently reside in Duluth with their three girls, Paisley, Posey, and Indy. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Bjornlund Graves. Thank you. I'm so honored to be mentioned along so many incredible athletes here today. Um, I mean, we've got national champions and that's basically incredible. Anyways, I'd just like to start off by thanking coach Bob Bartell. I think the coach of a team can really make or break a student athlete's experience in those college years. And during my four years at Concordia, I was privileged enough to have him as a coach. Um, he had the unique ability to crack the whip when need be, and also crack a well-timed joke, some of which were actually funny. I'd also like to thank my parents who spent endless hours and dollars, I'm sure, at softball fields and instilled many values into my life that I will take on and pass along to my own daughters. Um, my parents have taught me what matters most in life, my family and my faith. None of this would be remotely possible without my faith in Jesus, who planted in me abilities that led me to the sport of softball and in turn gave me uh, many, many fond memories and friendships that will last a lifetime. So um, I certainly hope that my days at the softball field are not over as my husband and I, like they had mentioned, have three daughters that I'd love to hit some grounders to someday, but I guess we'll tell, uh, time will tell what abilities and passions God has planted in them. Thank you again for this amazing award and congratulations to all my fellow inductees. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for your remarks this morning and congratulations once again. A trailblazer, Taya Lindbergh Schlunt, has the distinction of being Concordia's first Division II AVCA All-American and was a key piece in the Golden Bears rise to power in the early 2000s. Her selection to the AVCA All-America second team might have been the first for the program, but it set the tone for a program which has featured a Golden Bear on the All-America team every year since. A native of Forest Lake, Minnesota, she helped the program reach its first two NCAA tournaments including a national runner-up finish in 2003 in their first ever NCAA tournament berth. Already an all-NSIC all volleyball player in the Northern Sun at MSU Moorhead, Schlunt joined the Golden Bears and helped the team to a 10-win turnaround in her first season on campus, adding another eight wins in year two. In total in her three years, she helped Concordia to an 88-16 and overall record, a 42-6 and mark, in the NSIC with a pair of conference titles, which would start a streak of 11 straight league championships and 17 consecutive NCAA tournaments. A dominant force at the net, Schlunt concluded her career ranked third in, in kills with 1,456 and second with 402 blocks. Those marks have held strong in the most storied volleyball program in NCAA Division II history still ranking seventh today. She helped the Golden Bears win a region championship in 2003, the first of 11 for the program, and reached the Sweet 16 in her junior and senior years, which has now been done 17 times in 18 years. A biology major as an undergrad, Taya returned to Concordia later during her post-grad career for an MBA in 2014. She has spent the last 13 years working for Medtronic in various roles and is currently a senior program manager for Global Supply Chain. She married former Golden Bear baseball standout David Schlunt, a 2004 graduate. They have two children, Brody and Rena, and recently pur purchased a 120-year-old farmhouse where they reside in Grant, Minnesota. Ladies and gentlemen, Taya Lindbergh Schlunt. Hi, Josh and everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so grateful for this honor. Um, I'm grateful to Concordia and the community there. Um, I joined CSP after my sophomore year, or freshman year, I should say, after Moorhead, um, by some convincing from the, the then head volleyball coach, Geoff Carlson. 
Um, and when he tried to pull me into Concordia, I laughed at him and said that the school was smaller than my high school. There was no way this was going to work, um, but it did work. And I just am so grateful for the opportunity, um, the volleyball team, the teachers, um, especially my parents who continue to support me um, and um, really push me through my career. And so I'm, I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for this acknowledgement, but I really do have to pass it back to the coaching staff for my teammates. Um, I always say the Concordia was more like a family than just a school. And, and even to this day, I feel that way. Um, so thank you to all of you, um, to all the other inductees. Um, well done. I know um, what this means to you and the effort that went in to get to this point. And so um, just thanks, thanks be to God for all the, the blessings that he's given me in my life. Thank you, Tan. Congratulations again. A St. Paul Central High School grad, Adrian Perryman came to Concordia and became a 12-time NSIC champion on the track and an NSIC champion on the football field for the Golden Bears. He also still holds the distinct distinction of being the only athlete in NSIC history to win back-to-back 55-meter -back dash conference championships. Perryman shined as a short sprinter and garnered all conference honors in each of his four seasons as a member of the track and field team. In addition to being a part of the 2003 NSIC championship football team, he helped the track and field squad to a second place finish in NSIC outdoor championships, a program best. Three times he was named the NSIC track athlete of the week. Perryman still holds two school records, one in the 55 meter dash and one in the sprint medley relay. He, also, he was also the 200 meter dash indoor record holder at the time of his graduation. After a strong debut, Perryman made a big step forward in 2005, collecting all NSIC honors in seven events. In addition to wins in the 4x400 meter relay in both the indoor and outdoor seasons, he also picked up his first individual conference crown, winning the 55 meter dash in the indoor season. He followed with five more all NSIC honors in his junior season, including adding another crown by finishing first in the indoor 200 meter dash. Perryman closed out his career with five more all NSIC honors, including four NSIC championships, while also being named CSP's Most Valuable Athlete. After completing his degree in communication studies in 2007, Perryman began his career with Admission Possible, where he helped students with college preparation at his alma mater, Central High School. He later return, returned to Concordia in the Office of Admissions, also joining the track team as an assistant coach. After six years in admissions, Perryman transitioned to Assistant Director of Academic Advising. In 2020, Perryman joined Genesis Works. As the manager of college and career access, he prepares high school students for successful post-high school careers. Perryman has served on various boards, task forces, and councils, including an appointment to the St. Paul Planning Commission by Mayor Chris Coleman. He, along with a group of his high school classmates, started the Philando Castile Memorial Scholarship after Castile was shot and killed by a police officer in July of 2016. Perryman married Sarah Deutsch, a former CSP track and field athlete and record holder in 2009. They live in St. Paul with their two cats, Simi and Elsie. He received his master's in strategic communication management from Concordia in 2018. Please welcome Adrian Perryman. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for this. I greatly appreciate it. I've been working from home since March, so I, I go hard on the virtual. They told us we have five to eight minutes. I know some of those speakers have not been using it, but I'm gonna use some of that time. Um, so thank you. Uh, many of my closest fr uh, friends and family never got to see me compete in college for various reasons. Live streaming and HD cameras in our pockets wasn't a thing and, and no one wants to go to Wayne, Nebraska. So I added some photos to this to reminisce. Uh, most of them are randomly placed and have nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but uh, enjoy. Um, uh, the, uh, thank you for everyone that submitted a nomination, Reagan and Josh and the rest of the athletic staff, uh, Rhonda and the alumni crew, um, uh, Rube Saylor and the rest of the selection committee. Uh, thank you for letting me have a spot that should have obviously gone to another volleyball player. 
I'm not being sassy there. Um, just as a Minnesotan watching the Golden Bear volleyball team compete as a student, alumni, and a staff member are some of my happiest memories uh, as a sports fan and one of the few times that my team were champions. So again, thank you for that. Uh, the accolade that was not mentioned was I was an intramural football champion and I was a cheerleader for a season. So shout out to that, shout out to that crew. Um, shout out to all the other inductee, inductees this year and the ones I'm joining from the past. I humbly joke and downplay the importance of this induction when talking with friends because Concordia is not the most known, unfortunately, but I'm very proud and honored to join a class and the others. Uh, I've seen most of you compete and dominate at your sport, uh, except for you, Russ. I was not alive, but as the third oldest member of this class, it feels amazing to share this virtual stage with you all. I want to start with my thank yous. I know I'll miss some people, but I'm appreciative of everyone uh, that has played a part in my athletic and academic career over the years. Uh, first, my mother, my biggest fan, most consistent supporter. Uh, she once drove all the way to Bemidji to watch me run for like two minutes tops, maybe. Um, my favorite teammate and wife, former Concordia track and field record holder, Sarah. Uh, my sister, Maureen, for cheering me on over the years. My brother, Dusty, for being a teammate, uh, competition, uh, backyard training partner over the years as well my late father for supporting and having endless back in the day stories of his athletic accomplishments uh, and letting me know that athleticism is in my blood. Uh, my mother's father ran track at the University of Minnesota, so I'm always grateful for my genetic inheritance. Uh, thanks to all my friends and family that came to track meets and football games, transported me to and from games, practices, camps, meals, and everything else. Uh, my coaches, Coach Courier for recruiting me, Coach McConaughey for taking me on as a walk on on the track team. I had a lot of hamstring injuries in high school, so I never really got to fulfill my full high school track dreams. Uh, but I, uh, thanks to the welcoming environment of the track team and granting me that opportunity. Thanks to Charles Martin for connecting me with coach as a freshman. Coach Sampson for training me to become the record holder and record breaker and champion. Uh, all of the many assistant coaches, grad assistants who spent countless hours training and coaching all of us. All of my Concordia professors and staff, uh, Dr. Chapman and President Holtz, special shout out. Uh, President Holtz offered me a ride to the Mineral Water Bowl as a freshman when I was uh, redshirting to watch the team play. Um, and without him, I don't think we would have any of this here with D2 Athletics. All my track teammates and re relay teammates, a uh, special shout out to the Sprint Medley with now three Hall of Famers, KB, Kyle, and myself. Matt, you got next. All, all my football teammates, I started compiling a list of all my teammates over the years, but that would have taken way too long. You know who you are. I remember you all. Uh, athletics has played a huge part in my life from Jimmy Lee to the Martin Luther King Rec Centers in St. Paul to ICAA track to St. Paul Central High School. Uh, athletics are the reason I came to Concordia. As I mentioned, Coach Courier walked down the street to recruit me, uh, but I do have a history with Concordia. Uh, my cousin Neil uh, Perriman was an athlete in the 90s. He met his wife and fellow athlete and coach Liz Goldnitz. Uh, my wife and I followed in their plan minus all the kids, uh, but I remember watching him play basketball in L LMC as a youth and and baseball on the field before the GC existed. Uh, once the GC was built, uh, we played catch in there and I, I missed the ball one time and hit my eye and that ended my baseball career that maybe led to my track life. Um, I had basketball tournaments in the GC as a youth, uh, competed on the track in high school uh, at, in the GC as well. Uh, I met my wife on the track team. I, contempla I contemplated retiring from football after one year to focus on track, but if I did that, I never would have played with and formed a lifelong bond with my future best man, Mayshawn Holbrooks. Uh, and special shout out to Danimal and Chris Dennis as well. Uh, I met so many people through athletics from Concordia and schools we competed against that are now friends. I really loved being an athlete and being at Concordia. I have a lot of stories to tell, but I'll just read the titles. Uh, if you're interested, I can tell you more. Uh, but going hard in the weight room, DJ until 2 a.m. in downtown Minneapolis and breaking records at 9 a.m. at the U, uh, C unit, uh, coaching, uh, skipping practice to get a tattoo, uh, the Drake relays, laughs galore, uh, jeans and boots on the track, uh, bus ride shenanigans, the spring break track trip to Arizona, uh, being the loudest team on the track, the Griff myth, exploring college campuses, Charlie horses in the team van, Golden Corral, Pizza Ranch, fists in the air on the podium, and so many more. Uh, I worked at Concordia for 11 years. I left in January for various reasons. I didn't speak very publicly about those reasons, mostly because I was hoping to make it to the Hall of Fame. Uh, I love Concordia, uh, but I had to leave uh, because countless attempts by myself and others to and faculty to create change uh, went nowhere. Uh, but also I'll end with some praise of Concordia Athletics, but also uh, a challenge to Concordia. 
Uh, thank you, Golden Bear Athletics, for promoting mental health awareness while budgets for mental health support have been cut on the other side of campus. Thank you to Golden Bear Athletics for supporting Black Athletes United and bringing awareness to the recent march while the other side of campus has failed to invest in the staffing and services our diverse students need on the campus. And thank you to Golden Bear Athletics for having Comet Bear pose as a tribute to Megan Rapino and coloring book form. Megan, of course, is a World Cup winning soccer star an LGBTQ icon, but on the other side of campus, our LGBTQ students, staff and faculty have faced discrimination and still stay face discrimination at the hands of Concordia. I'm not saying that Golden Bear Athletics has been perfect on these topics, but I appreciate what's been done recently and I hope that mood spreads. But again, thank you for this honor and go Bears. When I think of St. Paul, the first person that I think of is Adrian Perryman. And from one CSP communication studies major to another, Adrian, congratulations and thank you for your remarks. Tyrone Ruffin remains one of the top wide receivers in the history of Concordia football, holding the career records with 2,930 receiving yards and 33 receiving touchdowns while ranking second with 188 career receptions. He wasted no time getting started as the 2005 NSIC Newcomer of the Year as a freshman before earning all NSIC honors two more times throughout his career, a second team selection as a sophomore in 2006, and again as a senior in 2008. Fresh out of Wyzetta High School, Ruffin stepped in immediately and played a major role in the Golden Bears' second NSIC championship in three seasons in 2005, helping the squad reach its second mineral water. He put up 518 yards on 34 catches with five touchdowns during his rookie season, as Concordia went 9-3 and three overall and 6-1 and one in the Northern Sun, and he was already one of the league's top 10 wide receivers statistically. He increased his catches, yards, and touchdowns in year two with 54 for 749 and seven touchdowns as a sophomore. As a junior, Ruffin had a career year with 859 yards on 54 catches with 11 touchdowns to earn his first of two Bear of the Year awards. In his all-region senior season, Ruffin continued his fantastic receiving uh, marks with 804 yards on 46 catches, hitting double digit touchdowns for the second year in a row with 10. After earning his degree in business administration in the spring of 2009, Ruffin stayed on with the program as a graduate assistant coach and earned a master's degree in organizational management in 2012. As a coach, Ruffin and the Golden Bears returned to the Mineral Water Bowl in 2010 as they posted a five win turnaround by going eight and four overall. Following his playing and coaching days with Concordia football, Ruffin has worked as a sales professional in the pharmaceutical industry, twice winning the President's Club Award. Tyrone resides in Golden Valley, Minnesota with his wife, Kelsey, a 2011 graduate of Concordia. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyrone Ruffin. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate that, uh, that kind introduction. Um, I would just like to start out by thanking the selection committee uh, for this tremendous honor. It really means a lot to me. Um, I also want to congratulate my fellow inductees um, from this class. Uh, it's pretty special to me that um, to be a part of this class with, you know, Hall of Fame or um, um, All Americans and national champions. It's, it's pretty special too that I know a lot of people in this class and have personal relationships with them and to the, to the people that I don't know, I, I hope that we can meet in person sometime soon and uh, get the chance to know you guys better. Um, there's a saying around football that it's the ultimate team sport. Um, and I think that's true. And there's no way that I would be worthy of this, uh, this honor without the help and contributions of my former teammates and coaches at Concordia, um, coach Maurer, coach Williams, coach Branch, um, and I would be remiss to, to leave out the, um, the late great um, Russell Gary, who, you know, well, all played a, uh, he played a, you know, a very huge role in all of our lives at Concordia. Um, I consider this Hall of Fame honor to be a team award. It's not just an individual honor. Uh, so I want to commend and thank all of my former teammates as well. Um, 
and all the support that I got from the Concordia family while I was there. And speaking of family, I definitely cannot leave out my own family. Um, I have to thank them for their support and love throughout the years. My mother, uh, Ruth Ruffin, my dad, Tyrone Sr., um, my siblings, uh, and my wife, Kelsey, who is also a Concordia alum. Um, I want to thank you guys for representing our family and coming to our games um, and being loud and cheering us on in the stands. And I, I, had a, I have a big family, so it was always a tough job for me to to gather enough tickets for our home games. Um, I'll never forget my last game that I ever played was at Bemidji State um, in a blizzard. Snow was coming in sideways and it's like a five hour drive here from the city. So, and we get out to warm ups and I look up in the stands and my whole family is there. So uh, that meant a lot to me. And, you know, that's just a small example of the important role that my family played in my life. And I, uh, I appreciate them and I love them more than I know. And, uh, you know, really appreciate the support that they gave me during my time at Concordia. Um, you know, reflecting on my days at Concordia, uh, I really feel blessed. You know, God really has blessed me to be a Golden Bear. And I want to thank him for all the lessons that I learned during my time at Concordia. Um, juggling being a student athlete wasn't always the easiest thing. And, you know, trying to balance all, the, all of those responsibilities uh, was a challenge at times, you know, with the academic requirements and, you know, trying to have a social life with um, you know, which led to some late nights, which was followed by uh, some early morning practices and meetings. And, um, you know, trust me, we had a lot of football activities that, you know, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of. And but to be honest, you know, I wasn't always that happy unless it was game day. Um, There's nothing like game day for me. And, you know, Saturdays in the fall was just a, a perfect day in my mind. So I'll definitely miss those, those times, uh, those game days. And, um, you know, that was a, a huge aspect of my time at Concordia. Um, you know, Concordia has prepared me, prepared me for a lot of my life, you know, learning the balance of my life and interacting with people from all different backgrounds. That has definitely prepared me uh, for my life now. And Concordia has meant so much to me over the years. I value all the relationships and the friendships that I built there over the years. And a lot of those people that I met and a lot of my teammates are still close to me. And uh, they remain very important to me to this day. Um, I enjoyed myself so much that once I got done playing and once I graduated that I decided to join the coaching staff as a graduate assistant while I was working on my master's. And so with that, I had the opportunity to coach some of my former teammates, which also brought about its own challenges. Um, you know, sometimes they would look at me like, you know, Ty, you always talk, complained about how hard you or how, mu how much you hated these 6 a.m. workouts. And now you're yelling at us for, uh, for not working as hard as we should. So that, you know, dealing with that was kind of, kind of funny and an experience of its own. Um, but being a graduate assistant, I also got the chance to recruit and, co and coach the next generation of Concordia student athletes. Um, and that was very rewarding, you know, trying to work with them through the same experiences, you know, that I had dealt with before them. So um, Concordia will definitely challenge you, but it's definitely a place that you can learn and grow and uh, prepare yourself for a successful future. So well, you know, with that, I'm, I'm appreciative of this honor. Um, it's hard to put in words how much it means and how much Concordia has meant to me over the years. Once again, I thank the selection committee, all my teammates, my family and friends, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys all in person here in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Tyrone, and congratulations again. A Morristown, Minnesota native, Russ Switzenberg was a two-sport star and a key member of conference championship winning football and baseball teams for the Comets in the late 70s and early 80s. Switzenberg, a quarterback on the football field and a first baseman on the diamond, was a two-time All-UMAC pick in both sports. Despite orchestrating a run-heavy Veer offense in his four years on the gridiron, he set the school record with four passing touchdowns in a game, a record that has stood for many seasons. He matched another record on the diamond with three home runs in a game in 1979, a mark that remains tied for best in program history. In his first season as a starting quarterback for the Comets in 1979, he threw for 1,080 yards and 10 touchdowns a school record at the time to earn his first of two all UMAC second team selections. He also set two more CSP records that season as his 19 completions and 282 passing yards against Mount Scenario 
for both program bests. He added UMAC Offensive Player of the Week honors against Northwestern Wisconsin in his record-setting four-touchdown performance. Switzenberg followed up that season with 1,130 passing yards and five touchdowns in 1980. During the 1981 campaign, the team registered a 6-3 and three record to win the Twin River and UMAC Conference titles as he grabbed all UMAC second team honors for the second time. He was a part of three more conference titles on the baseball field. After earning all UMAC honorable mention in his sophomore season, he went on to earn all conference honors twice over the next two seasons. His best season came in 1982 as he hit 405 while helping the team to another conference title. Switzenberg was active outside athletics as a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes co-intramural sports director for three years and as a resident assistant for two years. After receiving a degree in elementary education and K-12 physical education in 1983, he spent 10 years working as a junior high teacher for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. He then moved into sales, embarking on a successful 25-year career with Thrivent Financial. Currently, Switzenberg works with Camp Omega in gift development. His latest project, a new adult family retreat center, recently broke ground. He lives in Morristown with his wife, Suzanne, who is another CSP grad, and they're a true legacy family as their two children, Tyler and Tara, also attended Concordia St. Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Russ Switzenberg. Cheers to the committee. Thank you. President Friedrich, wife, Dr. Lori, friends of mine. My caller ID showed Concordia University, President Reverend Dr. Brian Friedrich. I said, I better take this call. He was the one that delivered me the good, the exciting news here. 40 years ago, Mike Flynn came down to Morristown and encouraged me to visit Concordia. While in Morristown, I had a teammate and very good friend, played a lot of ball together. Brian Merck Merritt, my high school coach, was Coach Gene Lindahl. He was my football coach, my basketball coach, and baseball coach. Um, there were, after an event, and my head at the time was quite large, he took me back on the team. I played, I let him coach let the referees ref, and that changed my life. Uh, I had a big part of changing my life. My family, uh, Suzanne, as I said, attended Concordia, Tyler, Tara, great experiences in Concordia's theater department. Their stage was their uh, playing field. Bravo to Mark Rosenwinkel and retired Concordia president, um, Bob Holtz. My sister, Marty, was a student at, at Concordia, and our family, attended a football game. My little red-haired sister, Anne, who became my, who became the uh, founding member of my fan club, my father, Jack, and my late mother, Marge, they attended all our football games and all four years of our baseball games. And thinking back the memories of baseball, um, Many memories, many friends, experiences, but hands down, the, by far, the best part of our team, teams uh, were the coaches. Coach Paul Roth, uh, Hawk, outstanding, was with us a couple of years. Coach Joey Klemp, all four years he was with me. So cheers to Coach Roth and, um, Coach Klemp, all the players agree that those two were the biggest parts. Um, that football game that my family attended was a big one, actually. 1978, famous 9-1 uh, and one team, one of the greatest teams of, of, of all time. Big Hamlin was, was uh, in, coming over. I remember Jarvis Keyes. Every time that... Jarvis Keyes sacked the quarterback or made a tackle. The audience, everybody at Concordia's uh, stands would rattle their keys and shout, 
keys. And it was very moving. We were doing it a lot. That was, that was inspiring um, to me in the day. And then towards the end, victory was in sight. And the Concordia band under the direction of the late Dr. Norris slowly and quietly started playing the on Concordia, the, the school song. And by the end, the final seconds, they were just letting it rip. So it was very nice a couple of years later, coming off the field late in the game, looking up in the stands and get, hearing the band do the same thing. It's, uh, it was very moving to me. As a quarterback, <clears throat> you have the uh, unique relationship with your centers. Uh, you get to put your hands on their butts for, for a long period of time. Mazur, Malapinski, uh, Big Roger Lynn, John Kelzer, offensive linemen were very special, uh, very special. They were smart offensive linemen, great senses of humors. Tight ends, Lachesky, Monklitz come to mind. If I was to go back and change one thing, I would throw to the tight ends more often. Although, although we did have the one of the greatest wide receivers of all time, Tyrone Strickland. So definitely thank you, Strick. And um, lineman Tom Roddy's mother blew up a big photograph once of Tom Roddy, Coach Jim Brown, Coach Brown, and, and I standing on the sidelines. And for 25 years, that big picture was right in my office. So I got to look at Coach Brown every day of my life for 25 years. Tom Roddy, I think Rod Lynn, some others, we're in that. In closing, I'd like to um, I'd like to share my greatest day at Concordia. I believe football has the most physical, physically difficult first two weeks of uh, of the season. We train, we work out, run everything, but you're not prepared to wear around forty pounds of uh, extra equipment. Those three and um, three a days are quite difficult. Anyway, three, four days into our three a days, my freshman year, I was in the dorm room praying, asking God, are you sure about this? My body was in ice, my arm was in ice, elbow, felt like I was in traction and in walks, I could hardly move in walks, this short soccer player, Lon Malley, came in my room and said, hey, the soccer guys are going to be throwing the football around out on Dunning Field. Come on out. I thought, ugh, soccer guys. I went out there that day and met, that day, met freshman football players, Tim Dreyer, Ron Ketcher, Lon, the rest of the soccer guys. Many of those soccer guys could have played football with us. But anyway, um, that was the day. Great friends. That's what it was. That's what comes back to my my old memories. So, cheers to cheers to great friends. Thank you. Cheers to great friends, indeed, Ross. Thank you for your comments this morning, and congratulations once again to you. The defensive rock of Concordia's first three NCAA volleyball championships. Mary Slinger Hyken is the program's all time leader in total digs with 2,349 and in digs per set with 4.52. The Faribault, Minnesota native was a calming presence who could always be counted on to come up with a big play in the back row, often leading to frustration for opposing hitters who couldn't seem to find the floor. A graduate of Bethlehem Academy, Slinger Hyken was a three-time NSIC Libero of the Year, a two-time COSIDA Academic All-American, and a three-time AVCA All-American as she climbed from honorable mention honors as a sophomore to the second team as a junior and was a first team All-American as a senior. Among her list of individual awards, her top honor came when she was named a top nine finalist for the NCAA Woman of the Year 
an honor that spans all three divisions across all women's sports offered by the NCAA to recognize exceptional athletic and academic performance, campus leadership, and community service. Her all-around excellence made her a vital member of a dominant volleyball program that could truly do it all. She was teammates with two National Freshmen of the Year, as well as a two-time National Player of the Year, among other All-Americans throughout her career. And even on a team full of award winners, no one could do what Mary Slinger Hyken could do on a volleyball court. Working together, the Golden Bears captured three straight NCAA championships in her sophomore, junior, and senior seasons. Her freshman year wasn't bad either. They did make a sweet 16 run. The pinnacle of her career came at home, capturing national titles in front of a packed Gangelhoff Center as a junior and a senior. One of those games we streamed last night, by the way. The third title of that three straight in her career, hosted at Gangelhoff Center, extended Concordia's volleyball winning streak to 74 matches and was the final piece of an undefeated 37-0 season, a feeling that Mary had described to Twin Cities reporters as both magical and perfect. Following graduation, Hyken worked as a lab assistant on her way to pursuing a doctorate of pharmacy at Pacific University, completing a dual degree in PharmD and a master's of healthcare administration in 2016. She is currently a clinical pharmacist at Essentia Health St. Mary's Medical Center in Duluth. Married to Sam Hyken in 2014, Mary and Sam had their first child, Hayden, in March of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Slinger Hyken. Thanks, Josh, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'd like to start by thanking the Concordia Athletic Department and the Alumni Association for making this event happen. Uh, while I do, as everybody, wish we could all be together in person um, to celebrate this exciting day for all of us, I, I appreciate all the work that went into making it virtual and having this virtual event, uh, which does, do, does not diminish the significance of the moment for each of us. Congratulations to all of the 2020 Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. Um, I'm beyond honored to be part of this 2020 class. Um, of the 10 of us, six are women, half are former volleyball players, and three were teammates and still great friends of mine. Thank you to the CSP Athletic Hall of Fame Selection Committee for selecting me for this true honor. It is an honor to me, to my family, to my high school, Bethlehem Academy, and to the many excellent coaches that guided me throughout my athletic journey. It is an honor and tribute to the women who came before me, those who challenged the system, who broke down barriers, and who fought for themselves and for women's sports. They created the world of sports that I was pri privileged to know growing up, and the world that my daughter may someday get to enjoy. Thank you to my parents, Ron and Elsie Slinger, who are attending virtually today. You have empowered your three daughters in all of our pursuits. I'm truly grateful for the opportunities and experiences that I have had because of your perpetual support. Thank you to my sisters, Betty and Laura, also attending virtually. Uh, they both shared the court with me in high school, which was a blast, and cheered me on in college. Um, and I do, I do remember losing a set to my little sister, Laura, when she was a freshman at Bemidji State. And I think it was my senior homecoming match, so. Both of you are amazing, successful women and athletes. Uh, thank you to all, all of Concordia University St. Paul, um, to my former professors, uh, especially in the science department where I spent a lot of time, who supported me as a student athlete. On numerous occasions, they had rescheduled my exams when we were traveling or opened up the organic chemistry lab on a Saturday morning so that I could make up a four hour lab assignment before our volleyball match that evening. I never felt like I had to choose between my sport and my education. Thank you to the athletic department, Tom uh, Rubes Rebelke, Tommy Maurer, Josh Deere, our trainers, everyone. Um, it was unforgettable to win two national titles at the Gengahoff and their support um, and camaraderie and efforts throughout my four years were unmatched. So I live in Duluth now 
um, hey Anna, <laughs> um, which is great and all. Um, and people especially love the fall and, and the fall colors and watching the change, changing of the colors along the North Shore. But for me, fall is a particularly difficult time to live in Duluth, surrounded by all these UMD fans. Fortunately, once anyone knows that I played volleyball at Concordia, it is always followed by comments like, how do Brady and George keep it up all these years? And what's their secret? How do they get their plays their girls to play so well together for so long. And um, my, one of my personal favorites, uh, Brady looks so relaxed during matches and sometimes bored. So with that, I wholeheartedly wish to thank the brains behind the Concordia volleyball operation, coaches uh, Brady Starkey and George Pageant. You have created something very special for all of us. Sorry. Thank you both for knowing when to push me and when to let me play. You're not only awesome coaches, but I've so enjoyed being a part of your lives. And I'm so proud to be part of this unbelievable dynasty. And thanks again for now giving me an annual reason to rub your decade of success into the faces of UMD fans. Please keep up the good work. And lastly, thank you to the teammates that became my best friends. I loved every minute with you all. Congratulations again to the 2020 Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. I'm humbled to be in your company. Thank you. Mary, thank you so much. You got me all choked up over here. Um, congratulations again on this great honor. Um, my name is Rhonda Palmersheim and I serve the university as Associate Vice President for Alumni and Constituent Relations and I'm a proud alumna of the class of 1988. On behalf of the Concordia Alumni Association, I want to once again congratulate all of our inductees. One of the greatest joys of my job are days like today, the days we celebrate the outstanding accomplishments of you, our alumni. The success that you experienced here at Concordia as a student athlete was only the beginning of the success in your life. You have each moved on from Concordia and created wonderful and unique experiences for you, for your families, and all the lives that you've touched. My hope is that you leave this morning with a renewed sense of self and a fond remembrance of your times at Concordia. I encourage you to stay in touch with us and share your future accomplishments. You're with us, with your fellow classmates and your friends. In this crazy time, our opportunities to gather together in person have diminished, but I encourage you to visit our alumni and friends website, one.csp.edu, to, um, to stay up to date on what's happening and to find out what we do have on tap. I have just a few additional thank yous to share. I'd like to thank Reagan McCarthy, Josh Deere, TJ McDaniel, Hannah, and the incredible athletics team and the coaches for the collaboration it took to make this event a reality. I'd also like to thank, um, again, our Hall of Fame Selection Committee and the investment of time they took to select this induction class. I wanna thank Jonathan Breitbarth and our entire IT staff for their support in putting this event together. I'd be remiss if I did not um, also thank them for their tireless efforts to ensure that our students, faculty, and staff had their technology issues met during this challenging time. And finally, to our guests. Thank you for joining us today and celebrating these inductees with us. I'm sure you all have stories to tell about each of these alumni and how they have impacted your life. We're glad you could be here. Our final congratulations to our inductees. Thank you for being here and sharing your words with all of us. Congratulations. I hope you all have a great weekend and go Bears. <laughs>